Well, hello, everybody. I'm going to go through some information that is very revealing about our Western societies, though most of the information is about the United States. Some information about the UK, but it's happening in all of our Western societies, the breakdown of social relationships, of friendships, of community, of family, loneliness at epidemic levels in America. Yes. Well, I know, based on my six years of being on YouTube, I have received so many comments from so many people, mostly from the United States, but also yeah, from an awful lot of European countries, Australia, oh God, humanity, the rapidity with which we have lost it is head spinning. It, it's so, it's kind of overwhelming. It's, well, when you see rapid changes happening in your culture and in your societies, you know that it is being deliberately engineered. That's a very hard concept for most people to understand. A survey of more than 20,000 U.S. adults ages 18 years and older revealed nearly half of Americans report sometimes or always feeling alone or left out. One in four Americans rarely or never feel as though there are people who really understand them. Two in five Americans sometimes or always feel that their relationships are not meaningful and that they are isolated from others. One in five people report that rarely or never feel close to people or feel like there are people they can talk to. Hmm. And don't an awful lot of us feel the same? What is happening? Americans who live with others are less likely to be lonely compared to those who live alone. But that doesn't apply to single parents who only live with their children. Only around half of Americans have meaningful in-person social interactions, such as having an extended conversation with a friend or spending quality time with family on a daily basis. Generation Z, adult ages uh, 18 to 22, they're the loneliest and it seems to be they're in the worst health. Social media, use alone is not a predictor of loneliness. We're seeing a lack of human connection, which ultimately leads to a lack of vitality or a disconnect between mind and body. Well, we've got major disconnect going on. Disconnect from nature, disconnect from each other, uh, disconnect from oneself. And it needs to be healed. But the only way that it can be healed is if people do the work necessary to heal it. Oh, yeah. Well, that doesn't seem to be happening much. So the findings reinforce the social nature of human beings and the importance of having communities. People who are less lonely are more likely to have regular, meaningful, in-person interactions. It, this isn't the first study. Social isolation in America. Changes in core discussion networks over two decades. And this was published in 2006. The number of people saying there is no one with whom they discuss important matters nearly tripled. Okay, that's a huge change in 20 years. So this um, network that they're talking about, well, a network, a social network, you know, your friends uh, and colleagues and, and family. The respondent now reports having no confidant. 
no confidant. And in 1985, they found that most people had three confidants. Both kin family and non-kin confidants were lost in the past two decades. But the greater decrease of non-kin ties leads to more confidant networks centered on spouses and parents with fewer contacts through voluntary associations and neighborhoods. Most people have densely interconnected confidants similar to them. Some changes reflect the changing demographics of the United States population. Hmm. Loneliness is rising in the UK. One in eight adults have no close friends. Almost seven million UK adults, more than one in eight of us, report having no close friends. No close friends. Wow. Uh, this is according to Relate and Relationships Scotland that did the research. Almost half of UK adults say they feel lonely at least some of the time and almost a fifth said they feel lonely often and or all of the time. Sadly, almost one in six said they never or rarely feel loved. Well, clearly we've got a problem with our societies major depression diagnose up 33 percent since 2013 five years a 33 percent jump in the major depression diagnose in five years this was posted yesterday hmm the details major depression cases have risen 33 percent since 2013 teens and millennials are showing the largest jump in diagnoses. Doctors are looking at increased social media and electronics use as a cause. We know that there are many causes. Well, wow, the list is long. Microwave frequencies that affect us physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Uh, all of the poisons that we're eating, breathing, drinking, but, yeah, uh, this technology certainly has brought about an isolation. I suppose there are people out there that are absolutely fine with connecting with people who are exist on a screen. But real life is really, really important. Real life. You know, community and family and friends and that you see. But because of the destruction of the family and communities. Well, do you ever see anybody outside anymore in your communities? Do neighbors actually talk to one another where you live? Can people actually have meaningful conversation anymore? Yeah, you know, we do really have to start with ourselves and look at our own behavior. You know, I, I, I visit this woman here who is um, a neighbor and she's got a dog. And wow, her health is really, really bad. You know, I've been calling her my elderly neighbor and she is only five years older than I am. And I, that was a shocker, um, but she never exercises. I told her, please, you've got to get rid of your Wi-Fi because, well, she reports symptoms that she's experiencing often. And many of those symptoms, well, it could be related to her sitting in her box with the Wi-Fi. Um, and she's got that huge TV screen, but I whatever she's got on the TV, I, I'm paying attention to it as I'm playing with her dog, who also never gets exercised and, well, is fed only treats 
Oh, okay. Uh, this is this is the only person that I actually relate to on a consistent basis. This is my real life. And if I told you what my real life was, well, you would certainly understand why I might be depressed. Um, but I watch these programs that she's got on. And it, these are shows that I never saw. Mom, Mom, and Everybody Loves Raymond. And then, yeah, one of the favorites, My 600 Pound Life or something like that. The reality shows. I, it was only in my relating to this woman that I found out, whoa, there's been an explosion of reality TV. All right. The commercials, they present people, especially white men. Oh, and 99% of the commercials, and of course that percentage is just, you know, kind of coming from my own observation, but oh, I would say it's a huge majority. The men, the adult men, are presented as adolescent, no, um, some are adolescent, and some are four-year-old, eight-year-old. The immaturity, the stupidity, it is shocking. Shocking. The TV shows um, that I missed, these are all reruns, everybody's screaming at one another. The family dysfunction is so right smack in your face. The lying, the cheating, and the sex, I mean, whoa. Yeah, it is a real shock to see how low this country has become. But when you have these programs that you know, you know are on and a lot of kids are watching, that lying just is an accepted practice and everybody kind of laughs about all of the lying that is going on and betrayal, you know, it means nothing. Oh my God. No wonder why people are at a loss for any kind of meaning in their life. You can only have a meaningful relationship if people are telling the truth to one another. And, and there's trust. All of this has broken down. It's just accepted now. So is it such a shock that we're finding skyrocketing quote-unquote mental illness in all of these kids? But how many of these kids also were brought up taking psychiatric medications that rob them of their own individuality? Oh my God, we are messed up. And look at this country now. Look at their leaders. Now, for what the Kennedys were and King, look, they acted like adults. And there was something there to respect what these kids are getting to see and yeah children emulate the adults that they see the adults that are around them <laughs> all they see is bullying behavior you know um, cursing now doesn't matter in public. It's, a, it's like the worst of the worst now is on the main stage. Opportunity that we had when we were growing up is gone for these children. And parenting as the taboo subject, well, parenting is <laughs> I wish I could say it's a joke.
let's just say it's a bad joke. And children have to suffer the consequences of that bad parenting. And many children now, it was, it was happening with the baby boomers and it's happened more and more with every generation. These kids are being brought up just to be the robots and everything is about success, material success. The imbalance that these kids now are um, growing up in. It's, it creates an emptiness. Even in children so young that they can't really articulate what they're thinking, they can see it. They can see, you know, they getting into trouble for lying, but all the adults around them lying. They can see the hypocrisy. And they so want just to be children and to grow up with a feeling of being loved and wanted and cherished. And mostly what kids get is do as I say and then you will get approval from me. They grow up in these conditional homes. And you all know it's true, so how many of us have experienced it? And then you get to be an adult. And then you're just told to march on. Forget everything. And no one, you hardly have anybody around you who's, who's doing any work to well, recover from those upbringings so that you can become who you really are. How many people do you know have been brought up in homes that are loving, caring, and healthy where the children are set on a trajectory to become healthy adults? And as a healthy adult, they can actually Pursue their own dreams, not mommy and daddy's, not what Common Core forces on them, but to actually live life. Most people are just surviving it. This is really sad. More than 9 million Americans with health insurance have been diagnosed with major depression. Women twice as likely to be diagnosed with major depression. One of the reasons for that is men don't like to ever talk about being depressed. But 85% of those people diagnosed were also suffering from another chronic condition. Wow, we have a very sick, sick population. Depression on the rise in America, particularly among children. This survey was conducted 607,000 people participated. So the age group of 12 or older. This is a time period of 10 years, 2005 to 2015. The percentage of the general population who could be diagnosed with clinical depression rose from 6.6 to 7.3 percent. Adolescents between the ages of 12 and 17. That was the group that saw the most rapid rise a four percentage point increase, 8.7 to 12.7 percent. Something's wrong. Something is wrong and all adults really need to examine themselves. All families need to examine that family unit and parents, what is happening? You put these children into indoctrination centers where everybody's got to be common and you force them into these very dangerous environments with that microwave frequencies, you know, exploding over their heads. And 
you bring in Common Core, a curriculum that literally knocks out critical thinking, thinking, destroys creativity and individuality. And then you expect kids to be okay. Wow. Why mental health disorders emerge in your early 20s? Really? Listen, uh, there are so many articles that at this point, all of the lies, it's so, well, yeah, I'm having a really hard time with it. Did it ever seem like people getting or, or got increasingly emotionally unwell during their 20s? Hmm. Well, that wasn't my experience. And in fact, think about the 50s. Those young adults in the 50s who were already raising children, had full-time jobs, and acted like adults. No, I don't recall that being a time where they, in their 20s, were increasingly emotionally well, unwell. There's a reason why mental health disorders emerge in your early 20s after all. Oh, thank God, we now finally, we finally now know it's a matter of biology. It's bad news, though. And if we want to live in a decent society, we're going to need to look at how we can prevent rates from continuing to climb. Okay, but it's a matter of biology. Well, if it was a matter of biology, then how is it that that biology has changed in the human being so significantly that now we have an explosion of mental illness in our society? Oh, and mm, in 20s, my God, we're diagnosing two-year-olds with bipolar disorder now. We're giving infants psychiatric medications because, oh, a doctor told them, told his parents that he... It's genetic. There's a genetic predisposition. We found it in your infant. And you better start them on psychiatric medications now so that that gene doesn't explode. Okay. If what we read today was true, if there was a gene that they claim they have found a schizophrenic gene, a depression gene, a bipolar gene, if that was true, then those with that gene, those with that biology, we would have already seen kind of a steady uh, number of people with mental illness. We wouldn't see an explosion, oh, that just happened to occur at the same time that we saw an explosion of people getting on psychiatric medications. And all of this technology now. Oh, right, and our food GMOs. You know, all of the poisons that kids are eating today, well... It can, it's not just vaccines that they are being shot up with. I forgot about that, right? But these foods that are actually creating ADHD, it's not, uh, you know, it's funny because today with the internet, you can come across studies that completely op are, they stand in opposition with each other. So you got to kind of figure out, oh, which one to believe? The studies that say that people have a chemical imbalance, mental illness is a matter of biology, you can discount. Discount. 
if mental illness was biologically based, then they would have actual tests to determine whether or not somebody was mentally ill. And there ain't no tests. How does one get diagnosed with mental illness? It is a subjective opinion of some psychiatrist. And how do they get those mental illness categories? Yeah, they sit around a table, they have a select group of psychiatrists at that table, and they vote. They vote. They put up their hands when they call out behaviors. And they vote. There are certain things that are very obvious, so that's why it's very hard to be living at this very surreal time. Studies have shown that many early childhood onset mental disorders stem from changes that go awry. Untrue. False. A lie. Many genes also make you predisposed to mental illness. Untrue. False. That is a lie. This is why depression and schizophrenia are both known to run in the family. Untrue. A lie. Now, do they ever talk about children being brought up in homes that are so riddled with abuse, neglect, abuse physical, spiritual, emotional, sexual, children who are so traumatized that, oh wow, they can actually uh, have their brains change as children if it's early onset abuse. Setting that child up for a host of problems later on, but no gene has ever been found to determine whether there is a predisposition to any mental illness. Science has also shown that your brain continues to develop well into your mid-80s, uh, 20s. Uh, hormones still fluctuate and your brain will continue to change during your early 20s. And, well, they also talk about how when people are going through um, uh, puberty and the hormonal changes, if any of what I just read was true, we would have seen an explosion of mental illness decades ago. Why is it just now erupting? Why now, if what they are saying is true? It's environmental, not genetic. Many mental disorders are chemical imbalances in the brain. Untrue. Untrue, and I'll get to how untrue it is. The search for schizophrenia genes. Um, let's just go to what I highlighted here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, great. The highlighting is gone. What does it say? I've got to pause you. Okay, I'm not going to read this article. Again, I will link to everything. But in spite of the fact that molecular geneticists have spent countless hours and millions of dollars, a specific schizophrenia gene has never been found. Decades of research have confirmed that the influence of genetics on psychiatric conditions is relatively minor and that those earlier studies misjudge heterability estimates. Even for many common physical conditions with clear biological pathology, the Human Genome Project has shown that there are hundreds of genetic risk variants, each with a very small effect uh, compared with these physical conditions. The debate about genetic risk factors for psychological conditions such as schizophrenia, depression, attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, which all lack distinct, distinct biological markers, is even more heated 
Why is it heated? Well, if you don't have biological markers, what the hell are millions upon millions upon millions of people doing on their psychiatric medications? They being told that they have a chemical imbalance or they being told that their children have genetic pre that they have genes that predispose them to mental illness start taking these medications now the field of psychology and psychology mental health they all come tumbling down that's why the lie has to be sustained and enforced and when you see uh, that in America 9% of school aged children are diagnosed with ADHD while in France it's less than 0.5% well that suggests that there might be environmental cultural societal factors or it could be abject greed putting these children on medication and the psychiatrist get an awful lot of money big pharma gets an awful lot of money and yeah parenting well any parent who does not do any of the research on vaccines, psychiatric medications, all, all of what really is important to keep a child safe, something's wrong with them. But genetics are implicated in a disease. Development of the disease is not inevitable. Given the right environment, the disease will not necessarily develop. develop. You've got people who are diagnosed with PTSD and it is known veterans with PTSD they didn't have it before they went to war children who grow up in healthy homes they're not diagnosed with PTSD children who grow up in abusive homes are Wow with no biological markers that can be used to identify mental illness even the diagnosis of these conditions is subject to society's vagaries of what is considered abnormal. We get a select few deciding for a population of ostensibly 324 million what behaviors are mental illness and what is not. Really? We're allowing this? It's insane. It is completely and utterly insane myth of the depression gene and hopefully yes my highlighting stayed the field of psychiatry genetics is littered with examples of a gene for schizophrenia and the gene for bipolar disorder that have failed to replicate even the most ardent proponents have become more circumspect about the search for genes that predispose one to specific mental illness and do you know where you live has a big impact on happiness and health bigger than you might imagine I can attest to this I don't think people take into account how importantly a place impacts their health until it's too late where a person lives determines their level of happiness more than any other factor New England Journal of Medicine reports that when it comes to premature death, genetics has only a 30% influence. The other 70% is attributed to non-genetic factors such as environment, access to health care, and individual behaviors. Wow. Individual behaviors. <clears throat> and that, under that umbrella, behaviors immoral versus moral lying versus telling the truth betraying people versus not betraying whether you have relationships that are based on trust or not behaviors such as you don't care and people are disposable 
You don't have to work anything through anymore. Divorce is easy. And walking away from people, it's easy. Why face a problem when there are so many more people out there that you can call, quote unquote, friends? Relocating is considered a type of loss, like death, divorce, or job layoff, because it disrupts social ties. And you'll understand why I am including what I am, the information that I'm reading right now in a second. Um, people who haven't moved at all in the past five years also reported being happier. This may be related to not having to find new friends and social networks. Uh, another study shows that close friendships, even more than family attachments, are key to health and happiness, especially as we age. A 14-year-old who moved even once had double the risk of abusing drugs or developing certain mental disorders by midlife compared with those who did not move at all. And those risks increase with more moves. It's very important to have a stable life where you are connected to the people who live there. So this is the reason why I brought that up. This is, and I've included this in a lot of videos. Why? Well, this is the uh, recollections of Dr. Lawrence Dunnigan. He attended a lecture back in March of 1969 in Pittsburgh. The lecturer was Dr. Richard Day who was a professor of pediatrics at Mount Sinai Medical School in New York, and he also served as the medical director of Planned Parenthood. Dunnigan states that when Dr. Day began his talk, he began it with, you will not record what I have to say, you will not take notes, you will have no pencils, no pens, no recording, So those in attendance listened to a very long lecture and this Dr. Day was considered an insider and he exposed the New World Order plans. And if you click on the link below and read this, if you have not seen my videos posted on this, you will see, wow, back in 1969 or even upon Dr. Dunnigan's recollection in the early 80s, you will see that everything that was talked about during this lecture has come true. Has come true. And we're getting close to having to get government permission to have babies. But the encouraging of homosexuality, uh, people will have to get used to change, uh, population control, redirecting the purpose of sex, contraception universally available to all, sex education as a tool of world government, tax-funded abortion, euthanasia and the demise pill, family to diminish in, in importance, um, an overhaul of our medical profession, and Relocating people. All right, so let me just focus on a few um, a few of the things that were said during this lecture that have to do with what I just all the information about people getting diagnosed with depression, loneliness, this epidemic of it, and moving around causes such disruption in somebody's life uh, that you lose social ties. It's all been deliberate. Yes, we have been socially engineered to hate one another, to lie, to betray one another, to not care for one another. And the opening 
was Dr. Day saying, some of you will think I'm talking about communism. Well, what I'm talking about is much bigger than communism. It is, it is a very dark communism on steroids. People will have to get used to change. Well, aren't we having to get used to change? Um, nothing will be permanent. Nothing will be permanent. People will no longer have any roots or moorings. And he said, people are too trusting. People don't ask the right questions. Sometimes people too trusting was equated with being dumb. People don't ask the right questions. Well, I would say that is absolutely true. The real and the stated goals. Everything has two purposes. So when you hear Trump talking, well, there is an ostensible purpose, and then there is the real purpose. And we get to hear the ostensible purpose being spoken by our politicians all the time. The real purpose? Well, it's easy now to see. You listen to what people say, and then you watch what they do. And if you are not paying attention to both, then you will miss the real purpose. So families to di diminish in, in importance. Divorce would be made easy. Well, from 1969 to now, no-fault divorce. And what is it? 50% um, of those who get married end up getting divorced. And now it's just acceptable. You know, when my mother and father were getting divorced and God, I don't know when that was. Um, was it 67? I remember going to see a friend and we were watching Divorce Court. They actually had a program on in the late 60s called Divorce Court. And I was watching it with my friend Beth Portnoy and her sister, her older sister, called her out of the room. And I overheard her older sister say, don't watch that program. Carol's parents are getting divorced. Nobody talked about it. It was like, oh my God. Now, no big deal. But what you put children through, getting divorced, most people who marry will marry more than once. More people will not marry. More women will work outside the home. More men will be transferred to other cities. And in their jobs, more men would travel. It would be harder for families to stay together. All of it brought about by design. Uh, easier divorce laws, creating instability in the family, um, and new difficult to diagnose and untreatable diseases. Are we not living that? Where are the other uh, subjects that relate to the information I just spoke of the encouragement of drug abuse to create a jungle atmosphere. Drugs will be used. Alcohol will be used to create instability. And when people experience instability, chaos in their communities, they feel more insecure. They feel more isolated. They isolate themselves. And that brings about loneliness. And when drugs and alcohol destroy families, that brings about loneliness and depression. You can, I, I'm, if you've not seen this document, I really hope that you click on the link and read it because you will really get to see a wow no more security. Nothing is permanent. Older people feeling that it was time to move on. They feel they couldn't even keep up with the changes in areas. 
that were once familiar. So, when you have a breakdown in community, in family, and you have people getting older, and when you get older, it's harder to meet new friends. When you get older, a lot of people that you once knew are gone. They died. But you don't have family. You have no more connection. And when families are not caring about one another, when the old people are just put into storage in their um, assisted living nursing homes, when they're put on my medications, when so many don't even have anybody visiting them, life becomes meaningless. And I'm sure a lot of old people feel like, I want to move on. Um, but this insecurity will be brought about with more accidents involving airplanes, railroads, automobiles, railroads, airplanes. Are you noticing how many accidents we're having? What is it? Southwest, three times in a week? I had to make these emergency landings? or It's all deliberate. All of it contributes to the feeling of insecurity that nothing is safe. Crime to be used to manage society. But the economy. More and more people will lose jobs and have to move to other sections of the country to get a job. And that move is very disruptive to the family. If the husband has to move, the wife doesn't want to move, but that's the only place that they can get a job, then they're moving to areas. They have no friends. They have no family. Very difficult as you get older to recreate a life for yourself, plant roots, feel a connection to where you live. So we're seeing all of that happening right now. We've got the mega regions here. I live in South Carolina. It's the, um, what is it, the Atlantic Piedmont region. There are an awful lot of corporations setting up plants here in Anderson in particular, but also in South Carolina. They offer jobs. Oh, to all of those up in Maine that, well, I did forget to read in one of those articles that the depression on the rise, New England, that's where the highest rates of major depression diagnoses exist in New England. Maine and Rhode Island in particular. Guess what? Maine is a rather impoverished state. Hardly anybody can find work. And, well, what's available? You move down to South Carolina. And I met a neighbor that lived in one of the apartment complexes I lived in. And boy, did that man look really depressed. When they moved in, I started talking to him. He had moved from Maine. He could not find work in the place where he was rooted, where he had family and friends. So he had to move his family to South Carolina because he found work in a factory here. This is all deliberate. So when you move people out of what they know into an entirely different state and culture and they have no connection, you feel lost. Especially if that cultural difference is quite large. And I will tell you that it is moving to the south from the north 
there is a huge cultural difference. So, um, all of this was by design. My God, <laughs> they were going to destroy the old system so that they could bring in the new system and they had to destroy American industry. The preeminence of the United States and the relative independence and self-sufficiency of the United States would have to change in order to create a new structure. Our system would have to be curtailed in order to give other countries a chance to build their industry. Otherwise, they would not be able to compete with the United States. So we had to be brought down. And guess what? Well, automobiles will be developed in Japan and imported to the United States. How many of us are driving Toyotas and Hondas? And things would be made so they would break and fall apart, those things in the United States. How many things are we buying today that are really crap and break and fall apart in no time when only decades ago you could buy you could buy a coffee pot and the only reason why you would buy a new coffee pot was because you didn't like how old it was. So the idea that you would not feel terribly secure promoting the notion that the world isn't a terribly reliable place, that would be engineered upon us. The United States would be kept strong in information, communications, high technology, education. Well, clearly that's not true. And agriculture. Um, the United States was seen as a keystone of this global system but heavy industry would be transported out, outsourcing, manufacturing. They got us already. It doesn't even matter if Trump brings back a couple of jobs. And the effect on our spiritual, emotional, psychological, those aspects of us has been extraordinarily detrimental. So, um, in terms of that, you know, mm, that biology, the genetics, the, oh, 33% increase in those diagnosed with major depression and many of the articles were talking about how people are more depressed if they don't have access to mental health professionals. Okay. Stay away from mental health professionals because they will make you worse. And I will link below to this to this video, Dr. Peter Bregan. Listen to what Dr. Peter Bregan has to say at the outset of this video. Oh, Dr. Peter Bregan is a psychiatrist. And I'll wait for that car to pass. Dr. Bregan is a psychiatrist. For many reasons now, going to a psychiatrist, probably the most dangerous thing you can do in the Western world, other, other than, you know, do something. Wow. Well, illegal. that's what he says. Other than do something illegal. This is a very good um, question and answer period between Peter Bregan and the audience. Peter Bregan, for decades, has been blowing the whistle on psychiatry. There is no chemical imbalance. The only chemical imbalance that is in your brain is induced by the psychiatric medications that you take. All right. Um, in order to have a healthier society, we all individually have a responsibility to do that work necessary on ourselves 
to become not the socially engineered robot that has been created by very sick individuals, but to do the work necessary that we bring back our humanity. We don't discard people. We stop lying to one another and betraying one another. That we try very hard to maintain trust because that is the number one. It is essential. It is the foundation of all healthy relationships. Trust must be brought back to families, in friendships, in all relationships. Without that, we will continue to descend into complete and utter immoral, disgraceful chaos. And now is really a time when so many people are hurting and they have no nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. That's why suicide is also skyrocketing. It is absolutely our responsibility, each and every one of us, to live our lives in a way that brings back meaning to life. And that means that we have to regard our relationships as important. It means that we've got to do the work to to respect and or love our family members. To heal as best we can. All links are below.